Hey guys, how you doing? Um, on the first episode of Zooming with Zach, <laughs> uh, we have my friend Errol Dobler. Errol, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We're surviving over here. How are you surviving over there? We're doing good too. So we got one kid asleep, the other two hopefully are doing Legos. Um, but you know, we'll see soon. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, I don't hear any crying, so we're doing pretty good. Um, but no, I wanted to have you on because I've seen the videos you've been putting on about leadership, leadership through adversity, and you know this is a real test. Um, so first off, how are you? How are you doing? How's the family? Because you have three kids, I have three kids. Yeah, so we, you know, we're doing okay. We've got you know five years old, six years old, and one year old. So um, the one year old's world is changing, you know. So they're fine. She learned to walk yesterday. She started walking yesterday, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, the upper upper township schools here are no joke. You know, we were wait. Most of my friends didn't start the homeschooling until last week or even this week. So you know, we, we're kind of getting the rhythm down. The teachers are doing a really good job of getting the curriculum out. And we're just trying to keep it disciplined and structured as best we can, getting them outside to blow up the steam. But, but by and large, the upside is, you know, obviously we're watching our pennies, right? So we're eating at home, we're cooking our meals, and we're just having more family meals. So the upside is we're, we're, we are spending more time together. So that's good, you know? So I think all, all in, we're doing fine. Yeah. Doing yeah. Fine. Same here. Um, we have – a shop right run coming tomorrow so uh, i gotta put the the mask on and the gloves on and we'll head out the shop right and load up um but what is uh what's your mindset like in a correction like this whether it be stock market crash covid19 um you know natural disaster you know this is like a correction or whatever you want i don't know what do you call something like this yeah you know it, it it's it's just it's a it's a heightened form of chaos but really you know what i tell my clients what i tell anybody is how we do business shouldn't change all that much in these times and if it is changing drastically okay as far as your your methodology and your process on how you deal with things then there's then there's a problem there's really something for you to look at so what do i mean by that well you know, when we talk about my leadership process, we begin with emotional awareness and recognition, and then cultural awareness and recognition, right? What do we do? We have to be aware of these things. And then to, to make corrections, we have to be super aware of emotions and what we do. And then we have to decide our guidelines for behavior. How do we want to behave? And then we need to have a good planning process, right? Anything we want to accomplish is a plan, whether it's simple or complicated. And those elements of the process should always remain consistent. And then understanding people's resistance towards this type of methodology because people are generally neurochemically conditioned to act a certain way or act on certain emotions. So, and I always, I base my process on my experience as a Navy SEAL and FBI agent, basically living in, in chaos, right? Every time you are on the battlefield, every time you are making arrests, every time you are on the street, it's chaos. But the process, how we approach everything, always remains the same. So yeah, we might have to do things uh, a little more quickly. There might be some more urgency, but the planning process remains the same. How you prioritize and how you execute to completion remains the same. So how we go about our life shouldn't change that much. That much. We have to recognize our emotions, right? Right now, emotions are high. But just like they'd be high if, on the battlefield if you got ambushed. That doesn't mean I change the way I maneuver people and make commands and fire my weapon because we're in an ambush as opposed to doing the ambushing. Everything's the same. It just means perhaps we have to be a little more quick with what we're saying. We have to see the, the field uh, more clearly and prioritize and execute more, more rapidly, okay, because those, those priorities may change, those situations may change, but the process is still the same. Does that, does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. No. Yeah. yeah. So for example, right? So what are we doing now? Well, now everybody's home. Okay. This is very stressful. Fine. How am I going to act on my stress? Am I going to act frantically and just knee jerk reaction to everything? Right? Am I going to take all my money out of the stock market or am I going to put it all in? You know, just 
without thinking, right? Am I going to go, am I going to be that person who goes buys 400 rolls of toilet paper and it needs your reaction, right? Um, that's, that's not good, consistent behavior. So we say, all right, look, I'm very stressed. I'm very emotional. I'm very scared. That's fine. I'm allowed to feel those things. But now what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I need to identify my situation and my plan. What is my mission? What are my actions? How am I going to communicate this? What are my contingencies? That all stays the same. Yeah. And so we're home now. Well, our routine has to change. Not a big deal. Frustrated. Still, these emotions are happening. But how are we conducting business at home? Right? Are we still methodical in what we do? Right? Are we still recognizing that there is heightened emotions? And how are we going to choose to behave? And what is our plan? It, just, it doesn't change. It just shouldn't change. And that's a hard concept for people to grasp initially, but you know, it's effective. I mean, I don't know how, you know. how do you feel about that? Does that make sense? No, no, it makes perfect sense. Like I always say, and one of my favorite sayings is same, same, but different. Um, mm -hmm. like we had, um, we were emailing the team back and forth and, you know, people were saying that, do you find it hard getting new business now? I said, well, it's always been hard. Right? <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. You know, an excuse is going to be an excuse whether it's, oh, now's not a good time because of COVID-19 or now's not a good time because, um, you know, we're really busy. We're swamped right now. Now's not a good time. And people are going to find a way to say no. They're going to say no. If they want to say yes, they're going to say yes. Right. Um, and that goes kind of a nice springboard into my next question is, you know, what's the difference between, and especially being a leader, What's the difference between false positivity? Everything's fine. Everything's fine. And true optimism where, hey, there's an opportunity here for us to shine. And yeah. how do you yeah. convey that to your team? Yeah, look, and, it, and once again, it comes with, with process. Okay. So, you know, and it begins from the beginning, an acknowledgement of the situation at hand, right? Here's where we are, right? Let's, we have to acknowledge when things are bad. We just have to. It, it lets it lets everybody know that they're not feeling that that they shouldn't feel bad for feeling scared or a certain way, right? So when the big boss or the leader says, "Look, hey, here, it, this is bad, and it's okay, all right." But here's our plan. Here's now, given the circumstances, here's what we now want to accomplish, right? We've had to change priorities. Here's what we want to accomplish. And when you, the planning process I use and I teach is just a watered down version of what we, what we learned in the SEAL teams, right? And there's, if you cover these elements, your plan will succeed or it will show you why it won't before you start. So I'm getting to your question, right? So it's identify the situation, set of circumstances, dictating a need for action, right? Why are we doing anything? Well, situation has changed, so that's clear. What is our mission, right? What are we trying to accomplish? So we've got to be very specific. What are the actions that we take to achieve that mission? Command, who's in charge of each action, right? Contingency planning, which is huge in these times of crisis. For each action, what's a couple things that can go wrong? Let's at least account for them. Okay, and then communication. How are we gonna communicate our plan to all the, all the, all the applicable people, right? We're gonna talk every day at four o'clock via video conference, whatever it is. So when we do that, okay, there's no reason for either false hope or false optimism or pessimism because we're objective now. The plan will tell us, right? We can say we have a way forward. Well, you can now be optimistic or not, but it is what it is. Here's our way forward. And that relieves in and of itself stress. When people say, here's our plan, and we will go with this plan until circumstances or the situation changes, and then we'll pivot and we'll just simply make a new plan. Right. That in and of itself creates optimism. It creates hope. Okay, it reduces stress. People get stressed because they're not a, they're not they're not sure what's going to happen next. But when we say, "Here's what we're going to try to achieve," "Here's our plan," let's go. We don't have to worry about false optimism or false hope because we've got a place to go. It's only when we don't have a plan, we don't have something in place, we haven't identified what we want to accomplish, when we go with this, "Hey, it's all going to be okay," or "Oh, the sky's falling." Well, based on what? Mm -hmm. right based on what does that does that make sense yeah I, I forget who said it um either as a general or a president but he said you know in any situation the best answer is the right answer the second best the second best answer is the wrong answer and the worst answer is no answer at all 
<laughs> right? I mean, it makes sense, but it's just, you know, the, and, and here's the other thing though about optimism and things like that. From a scientific standpoint, here's what we know. Stress literally downregulates our genes. Okay, and when our genes get downregulated, it compromises everything in our system, in our immune system. Okay, so how you look at a situation does matter. Okay, not ignoring the downside. You can't ignore the downside. Okay, but that's not being pessimistic. That's just saying, look, here's some things that are, here's the reality. Here's some things that can go wrong, but here's our plan. And let's be optimistic about our plan because, again, science tells us that those emotions of stress, um, anger, fear, frustration, worthlessness, they downregulate down everything, begin to make us sick. We become neurochemically addicted to those things, right? So we have between 80 and 90,000 thoughts a day. Science tells us 85% of those are the same as the day before. So if you think about it, when the emotion drives those actions and thoughts, we're really just doing the same thing and thinking the same thing every day. And that's why people get sick, literally think themselves sick. When we think from a positive standpoint, we upregulate our genes, right? We stay healthy. We stay less stressed, okay? And then we can look at things more objectively. So when we have our plan and we are enthusiastic and optimistic about the fact that we made a plan and we have a direction, that matters, right? So you can have a good plan and just be a naysayer. There's going to be some problems along the way. So, you know, optimism is good. False optimism is it's silly. It shouldn't even be in the equation, right? Make your plan. Be positive about your plan because your plan includes all the things that can go wrong. You're accounting for them. Feel good about that. It, you know, so that's kind of how I feel about that, you know, the optimism parts. Is that, you know, do you find, does that make sense? Does that resonate at all? No, definitely. As long as you have a course of action and you can easily portray that to other people and say, this is what we're doing. And then we're yeah. going to adjust as we go along, but yeah. instead of just kind of winging it and everyone's looking at each other, like, I, I don't know what we're doing. That's, you know, that's when things can go sideways, but yeah. And, and the naysayer in the group has their place. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the only difference is where do you, where do you unleash that person? So in my process, right, that person gets unleashed towards the end. So in other words, let's make our plan. Let's identify our mission and the actions that we need to take. Who's in charge of each action, right? So if all these things happen, we'll succeed. Now, naysayer, go ahead. Now throw in all the wrenches. Because we need to account for that. Well, this won't work because. Well, no, it will work. If that ha because if that happens, then we'll make an adjustment here. So yeah. good. Next. If that happens, we'll make the adjustment here. Right? So the naysayer has their place to say all these things. We just can't lead with the naysayer. Right? Because then, we, then we're just sitting there wallowing in our own self-pity. Yeah, and not doing anything. Um, something positive that has come out of this, you know, everyone's doing the push-up challenge. Everyone's, you know, a ton of people are working out a lot more at home because they have all this time at home now. Um, I know that if concept two, if the erg was a, a a public entity, the stock would go through the roof right now. Um, everyone's buying concept two ergs because we've been doing the virtual erg class, and then you have your kettlebell thing going on. Um, so that's a positive thing, a kind of a, like an off-the-wall question. Um, but what's your workout schedule like? What's your diet like? Because I think everyone, whether you're vegan or pescatarian or uh, uh, what's the, the new one? The, uh, what is it? Not if it fits your macros. What is it? Keto. Keto. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think we can all agree if you put good in, you get good out. Um, and it's real easy to sit home and eat the Cheetos, but what's your lifestyle like right now? Yeah. So we're, once again, we, we've tried to keep things fairly consistent as best we can. So the, our food situation is pretty good, right? We're pretty happy with it because we're cooking everything in. We're not, you know, we want to support the takeout stuff, but right now we've got to manage finances mm -hmm. before anything else. Um, so, you know, as much as we'd like to order every meal out, for a lot of reasons, that's just not fitting our lifestyle. So everything, we're, we're cooking in everything. So that's been great. Good meals. Um, you know, in these times, we've got to watch happy hour. 
right? You got to be careful that happy hour doesn't become the primary. <laughs> the happy three hour. The happy, five. happy three hour, right? So we want to make sure the happy hour doesn't start earlier and you start waking up later, every, you know, every day. But, you know, hey, whatever. Yeah, so we're, we're enjoying a couple glasses of wine at night, um, but we, we have to keep an eye on that. And then what we're doing is when me and my wife, we started the uh, 10,000 rep kettlebell challenge. So it's 10,000 reps over the course of a month. And it's broken down into 500 per workout. Well, you know, I don't need to get into that, but that's gym time, right? So the kids are, me and, me and uh, Jen will go to, the, uh, go to the garage, we'll do our workout. We'll either give the kids uh, a workout to do around us or just tell them to go play. But that's, we have scheduled that for workout time. And, and that's it. That's the end of the story. So we're, we're trying to keep that in a real disciplined fashion and just part of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's actually, to your point, it's been, it's been really good, right? Just to be able to lock it in and say, here's the day, here's the part of the day that we're going into the gym and getting stuff done. So yeah, I agree with you. It has been, it's made it a little more consistent and the excuses are certainly pretty much out the window. Right? Yeah. I mean, they just are. So, I mean, what, what, what are you guys looking like as far as that? I mean, I see your videos, right? <laughs> yeah. You've got it going. You've got, you know, Britt's got him doing yeah, the Britt's whole got thing. him in, like, buds right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, no, it's cool. I mean, we're lucky enough. Um, we have, like, the basements that we have, and Britt's all of her workout equipment. Um, so making an obstacle course is real easy. Um, yeah. But it's like they don't know they're working out, but they love doing it. They love the speed ladder. They love, you know, the, the um, gymnastic bar. So they're doing pull-ups and swings and stuff like that. Um, but it's just burning steam. Burning, uh, burning energy off. And um, yeah, the same thing. We've been cooking a lot from home. Um, we basically go till there's nothing left. Here comes one now, pitter pattering down the stairs. Um, <laughs> and that's all for today. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, but no, it, I mean, it's been good. And like, that's what going back again to like the false positive, you know, it's easy to be like, you know, misconstrued and oh, everything's fine. And look at the positives. Look at, just look at the positives. It's like, listen, you have to address that times are tough now. Um, probably going to get worse before it gets better. Um, but you do kind of have to look for a silver lining. Um, yeah. And you, you have to look, really look for opportunities. Cause now, you know, every time there's a correction, it kind of levels the playing field and it, there's a lot of room for people to shine and step up. You know, when, when times are good, you know, everyone's looking like a rock star. Um, but it's, it's the times when the wave comes and knocks everyone over. Well, now some people can rise to the occasion. Um, yeah, look, and, and I'm telling you, you're exactly right. And it's, it's still, from a leadership perspective, it's still all about the process. Yeah. Okay. And so the clients who I have who are, who follow the process, right? And, you know, because I've gotten on calls with everybody when this happened. Okay. You know, and, and my message was, there is no break glass in case of emergency way to lead during chaos. It's the same. And that calms everybody down like, okay, good. So, you know, and what? And just keep doing what you're doing, right? You're going to have to change priorities, but that's okay. How you execute those priorities are the same. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge the emotions, right? Remember how you decided to behave, right? We prioritize and execute. We are unemotional and methodical in our decision-making process. We ensure that people, you know, can express their views, you know, in a respectful manner, whatever your behaviors are, right? And I say, just keep following it. You'll be fine. Those companies literally, as I check in with them, are like, we're good. Hmm. We really are good. There are, you know, a couple of contracts here and there. It's to be expected, but we had a plan for that. We acknowledge that would happen. Here, you know, just the process. One or two of my clients started to panic a little bit, Right. They started to centralize the decision-making processes, meaning everything had to go through one person. And, you know, my only guidance to them was if we had just started working together and I saw that behavior, that would be the first thing I tried to rid you of, right? Because we have to now continue to delegate. We have to continue to allow people to make the proper decisions, to execute their plan. And what I'll tell the leaders who are a little panicked is, that doesn't mean you lose control. That just means you up your communication with that person who's doing that thing that you're concerned about. Speak to them five times a day. That's allowed. I want updates five times a day. That's your communications plan. That's okay. So 
It doesn't mean you grab hold of everything and make every decision yourself as a leader. It just means that you check in more, right? Yeah. You get more updates if it's that important. That's, that's allowed. So again, this will, nothing should change. I don't even remember what the question is. I just love talking about that part. Nothing should change. <laughs> what was the question? Oh, is it rising to the occasion? Oh, um, uh, opportunities. the opportunities, right? Yeah. And, and so, you know, it's just, it's not negative to say this is bad, but it's useless to say this is the end. Cause it's not to your point. It's just something different. Maybe yeah. Just, you know. yeah. It, uh, what comes to mind is probably the greatest speech in cinema history is any given Sunday, Al Pacino. <laughs> And he goes, we're in hell. Right now. That inch. Yeah, yeah, we're in hell right now. Off that inch. Yeah. Um, he didn't come in and say, you know, we're okay. We're down, we're down by 20. We're fine. He, he said, no, we're in hell right now, gentlemen. You know? <laughs> right. And everybody was like, oh, we yeah, finally okay. said it. Okay, yeah. Finally said it. That's emotional awareness and recognition. There and you. now what? Now what do we do? We fight for that inch. <laughs> we claw for that inch. Yeah. And he's too old. He can't do it for you. That's right. It's too old. Oh man. Um, I watched that movie just the other week. I love that movie. Lots that's a great movie. Oh, it was on. It was on whatever Netflix or something. I got oh, for any given Sunday. Yeah, of course, you didn't know what the hell I was talking about. Uh, Jen was watching it with me, and of course, there's a lot of naked men bathroom scenes, and she's like, "Is that what this is? Just men's asses in the whole movie?" I'm like, eh, it's, it's artistic. Awesome. It's artistic. <laughs> you wouldn't get it, Jen. <laughs> Oh man, as I go dark again, zero dark. Again. All right, um, no, that was it. Just wanted to catch up, man. Um, yeah. Give people a little bit of insight because you can be the leader of a business, you can be the leader of your family. You can. 100%. Be, uh, there's so many different levels. Um, you know, it's people might be looking up to you and you don't even know it. Yeah, look, and and when I go through my process with people, I tell them this will be most impactful in your home. Okay, because um, it will be. And it's because that's where we start to take things for granted. You know, we say things like, well, my home is my safe space. And I'll say, okay, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, people should understand when I'm upset. So I said, oh, so you just fly off the handle at home and yell at people because they should understand that you're stressed out? Yeah. I'm like, well, that's not a safe space, right? That, that, that's not it. A safe space is when you should come home and say, here's how I'm feeling. Can you give me some space? When you can, when you can freely acknowledge that emotion that's going to drive a certain action that's detrimental to the well-being of the family. Safe space is, hey, honey, right, husband, wife, partner, whatever you know, wherever we are. Here's how I'm feeling right now. Safe space is when you can trust that person to help you with that emotion and say, okay, I'll give you space. What can I do to help you? Talk to me about it. Whatever it is, it's not telling everybody to shut up and expecting them to understand because you had a hard day. Right. right? That's going to leave a wake of destruction behind you. So yeah, leadership in the house, it's the most important. Yeah. The home front. Yeah. Hell yeah. So All cool, right. man. I, pre I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate you. You know, is this the first episode of Zoom and this is The first one. You know, I haven't seen your face in so long. I miss you. I bro. know. I know. So the 10,000 kettlebell swing, you're doing, you know, you're doing your erg stuff, but, you know, are we going to see you on that or not? Well, here's the deal. The, we only have a 25 pounder, so I can knock out 10,000 right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that I'd like to see, though. I've, um, I've been doing uh, <laughs> goblet squats holding Blake, so I think she's more than 25 pounds. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Yeah. But uh, tell the family we said hi. Hey, um, I'm sure we'll be catching up. Likewise. Likewise. All right. We'll talk to you soon, man. Stay safe. Wash your hands. All right. <laughs> See ya.